Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. This podcast is being sponsored by Get Loopy. On episode 41, you can hear the story of Isabel, the co-founder and CEO. Get Loopy, get a 20% discount off your first order. GetLoopy.com Take it from the Iron Woman. Again, we have a very special guest with us. We have Amar Kureishi. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Amar is joining us from Singapore. It's his morning, my evening. Welcome, Amar. Please introduce yourself a little bit. Who is Amar who will be joining us today on our episode? Hello, Susanna. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here. When I'm asked to introduce myself, it, there's always a little bit of awkwardness because I'm not quite sure which, which side of me that I, I should be introducing. There's a professional side, but even the professional side, I trained as a physician and, and infectious disease specialist. I was in, in academia in Calgary in Canada. But then I left that and I was in research and development in the pharmaceutical industry. And now I'm more interested in mindfulness mm -hmm. and leadership development and executive mm -hmm. coaching. So, but that is just the professional side of me. I'm also a father and a husband and a son. Mm -hmm. I'm also an author. I've written a book, a book of fiction. Perhaps if I'd like to choose what I, I am, I'd like to be, I'd like to be an author. And I also paint. I'm not quite sure which, when I'm asked to introduce myself, which one of those I should put forward. I think you bring everything. You and I, we have met through the Asian Leadership Institute, where we do coaching for leaders in mindfulness. So tell us a little more about that work that you, seems like you're passionate about it. I am. Thank you. What, what I was trying to lead into is we define ourselves in different ways. Like when the question is asked, who am I? Who are you? Mm -hmm. So we put forward a story about ourselves. So now it, it's hopefully a true story. And I think in most <laughs> instances it is. Nonetheless, you know, it's a construct. Mm -hmm. Because underlying the question still remains, well, you know, who are you? Are you what you do? Are you, what you, uh, are you the things that you do? Are you the things that you have done? Or is there something else? in you. I mean, if you go to university and you study medicine or law, is that what you are? Right? Mm -hmm. What about the person before that? Or, you know, if you get married, you're in a relationship, you're a husband, wife, or whatever, father, I mean, is that who you are? I think, you know, when we say in coaching, it's the whole person, it is. But I think it's important to understand that that whole person has different components to it mm -hmm, and these components mm -hmm. are shifting so it's more fluid right it's not mm -hmm. that oh i think i really understand you now i think it's trying to understand like a, a shadow underneath a cloud that's passing mm -hmm. not only is the shadow passing but the cloud is changing shape i think that's the then the fundamental fundamental mm -hmm. question i mean another question i'm often asked is like you know where are you from yeah and i always have a difficult time with that question mm -hmm. For the benefit of your listeners, I, I was born in Pakistan. When I was 16, my family moved to Canada. That's where I finished uh, my schooling and went to university and married and had children. And I was then 22 years in Canada. Mm. And then I moved to the U.S. when I left academia and joined industry. And then I was in the U.S. for a couple of years. And I lived in Germany and then China. And then now I've been in Singapore. So where am I from? Yeah, exactly. So that's a very interesting question. Yeah, yeah. When I was 16, I was asked to write an essay in school. When I, this was when I first arrived in Canada. It had been a big change for me. But the essay I, I wrote was, is my name Armour or am I Armour? And 
You know, and I'm not sure what got me into that topic, but I think I always had this sort of reflective, contemplative side to me. And I think this is why I've become more and more interested in mindfulness. Perhaps there's mm -hmm. some seeds that were always there. An actor who can go on a stage and mm -hmm. play many roles, depending mm -hmm. on the stage. And you can put on different costumes and you can have mm -hmm. different props, right? But when you get off the stage, who are you? Mm -hmm. Because I think the mistake most of us make is that we don't realize that that we, we get off the stage, that there is something beyond us than what we do. So caught up in doing and so caught up in like, I am this, now I've been, I have that title, I'm promoted to this, I own this, this is mine, mm -hmm. that we don't mm -hmm. remember. And I think this is perhaps something during this, you know, lockdown where we're all sort of have some forced isolation, which of course is mitigated by, I guess, virtual meetings and mm -hmm. talking to people. But I think the advantage of this is to try to perhaps think about, you know, what what are we in essence? Are we what we do or is there a being beyond the doing? Right? Mm -hmm. Because the doing is also tied up with, with consumerism, always more, always <laughs> something else. Wherever we are, we need to be somewhere else. However mm -hmm. much we achieve, we need to achieve something more. But we don't stop to ask why, right? why? Right? And I think this is perhaps an opportunity. I think, you know, the consensus seems to be that, you know, after coronavirus, COVID-19, the world will be different. The world, you know, the word reset has been used. So uh, perhaps, and they say it's maybe it's an opportunity, but I hope the if there is a change, if there is a transformation, it will be the, the transformation which starts looking at the self. Right? Yeah. Like, what are we? Because one of the interesting things I've found with coronavirus is, people's relationship to life and to their death. There's almost an assumption now that, well, we shouldn't die. Death is something highly abnormal. We're all terrified. And particularly when we look at coronavirus and what we know about it now from several million cases, those who are vulnerable, and I shouldn't say it's only most vulnerable because you know children, young adults are barely affected. So it's actually the vulnerable population are the elderly, predominantly those who are, you know, over 70, 75, 80. In Italy, I think it was like 80 or 90 percent of all those who died. And they were not also healthy people mm -hmm. in their you know, 80s. These were people who had at least two comorbidities, usually yeah. heart disease, lung yeah. disease. For sure. Yeah. But, but the fear and the terror that basically ripped, you know, across mm -hmm. particularly Western society, I think, it was extraordinary because of that. And not just in the elderly. Even now, I mean, people who are sort of in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they're so, like, disturbed by this, right? Mm -hmm. right? And this is, to me, something strange, right? And it tells a lot about our society, you know, how advanced we are, knowledgeable we are, but yet how much we've perhaps not developed in wisdom, right, and understanding, exactly. mm -hmm. right, because ultimately we come and we go, mm -hmm. right, and that's not only the human condition, since there were humans, you know, whatever, 300,000 years or five, mm -hmm. half a million years ago, but that is the condition of everything, right, mm -hmm. every living creature, you know, whether it's a tree or a leaf from a tree or a person mm -hmm. or a cat or a bird. And that's, that is life. So if we put ourselves in a position that somehow life is abnormal, that life itself is a disease, then, you know, we are going to be very tormented and very unhappy mm -hmm. because this, we cannot escape this. Mm -hmm. We cannot escape it. Nor should exactly. we. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nor should we. In fact, yeah. you know, when we look at stories of old, old, you know, the Greek mythologies, some of the, you know, the worst things that can happen are people who seek immortality and mm -hmm. wish to live forever. Mm -hmm. And then the gods in their way grant it to them. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then this is the worst curse possible. Right? Mm -hmm. When they live forever, all the people they know, everything around them dies and changes. And then mm -hmm. often in this instance, they not live forever and young and healthy, but they're mm -hmm. also aging. Mm -hmm. ways. So then that is an, an ultimate curse. <laughs> That's not good either. <laughs> What a nice, interesting, mindful conversation here. Something different than talking about sports. What is your mindfulness? What is your focus? We want to know. Leave a comment. Ask questions. Be curious. Just be. 
Take It From The Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday and every Wednesday. Chime in and make sure to purchase Get Loopy. You get a 20% discount of your first order. Getloopy.com. Take It From The Iron Woman. Thank you for listening.